am uh, an LA Drupal manager. I'm also a fellow Drupal developer. Uh, I also have to do a lot of liaison work between design teams, the business teams, and then the developers. Basically, I speak geek, uh, and I know also how to try to, you know, be kind to the other people who don't know a lot of the uh, intricacies and internals of Drupal. Uh, this is my website, chrischarlton.us. Uh, I post a lot of tips. Uh, I've actually been blogging for uh, for a very, very long time. I took it off, so I've been literally posting my old stuff back up. So trying to get back in the rhythm of uh, giving out a lot of information. So I actually uh, do quite a bit of work, and I am known for in uh, a lot of areas, and this is horribly wrong and ugly. I apologize. This is an old Drupal 5 site, and I started to do some tweaks right before the camp, and I busted something, and I didn't have time to fix it. I don't care. I'm going to wipe it clean and probably do a D7 site. You know, I'll be happy for that. Um, basically, I have free extensions for Dreamweaver, Eclipse, and a few other things. Uh, and I'm going to show you a bit of those. A lot of them are in development, so if you see a funny prompt come up, like an error or something, just please ignore it and let's have fun together about this. Um, but uh, a few varying things. So I was responsible in doing like the jQuery uh, API and the Drupal API for Dreamweaver. I'll be covering those. Uh, and then I'm actually more recently working on a set of Eclipse plugins uh, for the PDT, PHP portion of Eclipse. Uh, for Drupal developers. When Rich was up showing NetBeans and I mentioned that Sun had a suite of add-ons for NetBeans for Drupal developers, uh, it, is ex it mirrors very much with what I'm doing for Eclipse. Uh, so a little bit of background. Eclipse was actually started by IBM. Uh, this was their own uh, kind of foundation uh, system that they were actually building their own editors on, uh, a lot of front-end stuff. And essentially at some point they ended up open sourcing the Eclipse project and uh, there was a foundation that was created around it. A lot of companies uh, jumped on it. But what it was is, at first, it was really used not to create editors or anything really for code editing uh, for the public. It was for internal IBM staff to, one, have their ultimate editor uh, work cross-platform because it's written in Java. Uh, and then it started to take on a life of its own in other ways where they were starting to extend the interface for not code editing, but actually point and click editing. And I'm not talking Dreamweaver stuff yet, um, but really like a form. So a uh, quick show of hands, how many here have a issue or ticket system? Mantis, uh, Bug Tracker, stuff like that. Okay, so just a few. And those that don't know what those are, it's basically a database, very similar to Drupal, that just logs a bunch of nodes that are problems or features you want to just remember for later on. So when you like when you submit a bug, when your Windows crashes, when your Apple crashes, uh, when your software crashes, it says, hey, do you want to send a submission? Basically, that creates a bug for you, and you never have to kind of deal with that. Uh, with IBM, they started to use Eclipse to start editing forms and interacting with databases way outside of a project's file and everything. So it started to really change shape and do other things. Uh, Eclipse has a lot of faces, as I'll call them. Um, and I got into Eclipse through my work with Adobe um, because Eclipse became the uh, foundation framework and uh, software for their Flex editor, which was a more XML oriented uh, slash more advanced version of Flash. Uh, and Eclipse, uh, really, I, I had to learn Eclipse for my Flex development. And then I saw Eclipse started to do PHP, did a bunch of other stuff because I had a C++ background. So I was like, hey, Eclipse does a lot that my Dreamweaver doesn't do. And I'm going to cover some of that stuff. So uh, with Eclipse, I'm going to jump right into my Eclipse. And my resolution isn't that great right here, but I'm going to try to show you um, the parts of Clips that I actually like and use um, consistently. So I have a Clips PDT. That means PHP Development Toolkit. So it's a free download on Eclipse.org. You can download it, like Rich was saying. It's, you know, 140 megabytes or so. But uh, when you launch it, and again, mine is very squished. Uh, okay, so please, uh, th it, this is not the very clean Eclipse that a lot of people are used to. Um, it's actually quite unfortunate, but we have things like uh, what are, uh, perspectives. So in here, I have these different perspectives listed. So when I'm editing XML, I switch over to the XML perspective. And as you'll see, all my panels and layouts change. Um, this is basically the mode that I want to use when I'm editing uh, uh, XML. And the same goes with PHP. So jumping into PHP, what I have is a, I have a list of projects over here, the, uh, the PHP Explorer. Um, and actually, what I'll do is I'll show you guys how I add a project. It's very quick. 
So I have a PHP project. I'm going to say add new. Um, and if you were at the keynote, you guys saw this site called rockdrupal.com. Uh, so I've been working on this, and the site that's up now is basically a static HTML page because I've been working on stuff. Um, but I can have Eclipse point to a current Drupal site that's already on my local machine. So what I'll do is I'll actually jump over to uh, my site's real fast. I'm going to go to Rock Drupal, and this is the Drupal folder. So I set this up before I even kind of had my Eclipse uh, know about it. Um, so I'm telling Eclipse, hey, I already got a folder for my project with files in it. Go use that folder. So I tell it to use that folder, and uh, if I need it to say only support PHP 5.2 in my syntax in Eclipse, uh, any of the configurations, I could do that. Right now, Drupal 6 doesn't have full support for 5.3, so I'm going to leave this at 5.2. Uh, I could go next, and if I had maybe some external folders or files, developers are very used to this, uh, you know, kind of symbolic linking to something, other repository, SVN externals, etc. Um, if you work that way, then you can do that in Eclipse by saying, hey, this is my project folder, but these are some other folders that I want to have listed in the project folder, but they're not in the file, you know, the same folder as my files. They're totally external, but please bring them into me. Uh, into my project, so uh, no big deal. So it says, hey, you know, everything looks kind of good, yeah. Uh, so I say finish, and we see now a new project in Eclipse uh, for Rock Drupal is now listed. Uh, in fact, it has a little P up in the corner of the folder. That means it's a PHP-based project, right? So I can open it, and in fact, I can even go into it because I have a lot more projects than what you guys were seeing, but I was filtering them, and now I've even kind of just dug deep into a folder. So when I'm working on a module, uh, as we all know, our modules go in sites, all modules, and then there's usually a breakdown in there, custom and contrib. So when I'm working on custom modules, a lot of times I will literally just kind of go into the module folder so I don't have all that other stuff there. But now, you know, the project, I can use those files, go back, no problem. So I can even navigate back very easily. So there's this navigation mechanism built into exploring your files. So it's very easy to get around. And like what Rich was showing in NetBeans, uh, I really don't even have to go click anything. I can use a key command uh, that says open resource, and it's like file. So uh, let's say I was actually looking for node.module. Okay. Well, what if I was actually looking for every installation profile in a Drupal site? I could use wildcards, asterisks, stuff like that. Um, looking for a file, uh, I was, like I said, looking for node.module. So I could load up node.module here because let's say I want to look up and grab the code for hook underscore node API. Okay, Node API hooks. I can go into Node module, open this PHP file, and uh, for some reason it's actually not rendering the color, but I promise you normally it does. Again, I've been really doing a lot of tweaking. I got a, huh? Extension. Uh, yes, this is a newer version of the clips, and my plugins that I'll show you in a bit actually give the color coding so it recognizes. So by default, people would have to actually jump up to Eclipse, go to uh, their preferences, and content types, they would actually go in, and it's kind of a manual process. And this is all on Drupal.org. And then you go to PHP, and then you're going to add star.module as a PHP type, right? Well, I was tired of doing this every time Eclipse had an update. So I actually programmed that into an Eclipse plugin that I give away for free. It's been out for a while. Uh, this new version of Eclipse, I've been getting into the new API, so I just did not install that here. So let me actually close this module file. Thank you, sir, by the way, for bringing that up. So I'm going to actually open it again real fast. And look, uh, the last file that I actually opened using the open reference comes up at the top, and it even breaks it up into different things. So I'm going to actually pull that open, and voila, we have, uh, we have color, oops, excuse me. We have color-coded PHP. Great. All right, so now I can actually jump around. And just like even Rich was showing, and uh, even Dreamweaver does this, but we can do things like uh, uh, get uh, code hints for any function that comes up. I do like how NetBeans kind of offers you uh, the alternate methods if an argument is optional. I thought that was nice because if I was new to development in general, or especially new to the API, seeing those other alternates kind of you know, gives me less stress of, oh my god, I need to go now learn all the arguments, and there's like maybe six, you know, for the old Drupal 6 way of coding. And of course, uh, similar to NetBeans, uh, and even now, even uh, newer versions of Dreamweaver, we get code hints of the API appearing, I mean, uh, API hints right next to the code hints. So I'm actually going to not edit node.module because, right, we're not supposed to edit core. Um, but instead, I'm just going to not save by closing this file. That was my 10 minutes. I was hoping to do one ID, and I'm going to wrap up. 
Yeah, okay, so good. Okay, um, basically, so I was able to open and find a module file that's in Drupal core. You could do this for your custom modules, but what if I really just wanted to find a function? So normally people would actually load up node.module and they would use either a find, you know, kind of option, or once this file actually loads, they would use uh, what is known as a view, which is like panels or, you know, sidebar stuff for us. Um, I'm going to actually minimize this. Sorry, my machine's uh, kind of chugging now. But let's say I open this node module file and I need to find that hook underscore node API uh, full, uh, um, function. So I can go through the list of functions and kind of jump right to it if I found it. But this is like a really big file. This is a lot of stuff for me to dig through. And I'm not going to do this over and over again. So instead, I'm actually going to do a, uh, a very similar thing to open a uh, resource. Let me actually quit this timer. Maybe that's messing with me. Okay, come on, come on, Mac. Uh, anybody can kick the beach ball? Okay, there we go. So, um, so again, this is actually a large file. I'm doing a bunch of stuff in the back, and I see I'm actually running in the bottom left corner. I've actually tapped out my clips in memory, so uh, I've just been doing a bunch of stuff. Let me actually uh, set that to clear. It should fix itself and speed it up. So again, I have to open this node module file. I now have to dig around for that hook underscore, or like Rich was saying, you alt tab, basically jump to your web browser and open api.drupal.org, kind of search for it there. That is really no fun. So another, come on. I am going to punch you. Uh, let me first quit this. Okay, let me let me launch again real fast. No, don't report it. Okay. Uh, no, and again, I am a, I, I am an Eclipse plugin developer, so I am pushing my Eclipse way to you know way too far sometimes. Uh, and of course, right before the camp, I didn't have enough time because I was organizing the camp. Uh, it's kind of setting a lot of this up. So let's uh, let's hope that Eclipse doesn't care. Okay, good. All right, so I've got my project file, right? So, all right, come on, come on. All right. So I'm in my Rock Drupal file. So like I was saying, I can find the node module file. I can look for the, you know, the hook uh, function. Or I can actually just ask Eclipse for it to open a method. So I can say, hey, Eclipse, get me every single hook underscore method that is across my whole site. So if I had 50 modules installed and they had anything hook underscore in their system, as a function, this would all come up. So I wanted to do the hook underscore node API, right? Okay. All right, I'm not going to get too crazy, but let's say I'm just going to pick this one up. So uh, basically, Eclipse was able to kind of do a quick search, and it actually found the function that I would be able to jump to, edit, uh, copy out of Drupal core, and then paste into my module to then edit. Of course, that's a lot of our same workflow. Uh, you could do debugging. There's a lot of technical stuff that this does. Plugins are crazy. Uh, anything from managing and doing live SQL database editing to uh, integrating with your uh, content management systems in various ways. It's, it just gets really crazy and wild. And there's things that I think the Drupal community would never even pay attention to because by default, since it's based on Java, there's a huge Java following. So there's all these tools for Java. And slowly, there's been more tools for PHP. So that's good. OK, uh, really pushing on fast. Uh, the other one I'm going to talk about is Adobe Dreamweaver, especially CS5. So CS5 for Dreamweaver is actually great because designers now have a better tool for working with building Drupal themes. <laughs> uh, working with Drupal themes. And I still use this sometimes to do a little tweak if I need the front end to be viewed. And I'll show you the reason why. So CS5 has uh, WebKit built in. Uh, and if, for those that don't know WebKit, that is actually the uh, HTML and CSS and JavaScript, you know, kind of rendering engine that is used in Apple Safari uh, and uh, a lot of other, you know, basically everything else that is adopted. Even the new BlackBerry 6 uses WebKit and a lot of people are finally happy to get to actually surf websites on BlackBerry properly. Right. So uh, CS5, this is the interface. Nothing too magical, nothing too new, but there are deep features that are just amazing. So let me actually quickly open one. I have this Drupal site uh, open, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Sites All Themes folder, and I actually created a brand new Drupal 6 theme called CS5. So we see all my files here, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open node.tpl.php. Uh, I have um, PHP running in the back uh, along with my SQL. And a new feature for Dreamweaver is that it could discover all the uh, kind of uh, included files now that are PHP based. So I can say, hey, go discover that. Yeah, you're going to take a little bit of time. But what it's going to do is it's going to run Drupal's code, track all the stuff that's loading, all the files, the includes. And uh, what does it say? Unknown error? Okay, no big deal. But I promise you, it actually does dig into, and then it understands what files are needed to build node.tpl.php. Now, node.tpl.php is a bad example for that feature because it's just on its own, um, and it gets kind of pulled into things. But let's say if I open uh, index.php, it would know how to dig into stuff like that. Um, I actually, this is a very common view. This is design view. All we see in Dreamweaver normally are these PHP shields, which mean that they're PHP code. So if I kind of did a little split view here, we see that what I highlighted is actual PHP code. It's just Dreamweaver can't render that in design view. So now what Adobe has done is, and I'll actually kind of shrink the little code over here, uh, they've added a live view. And this is where the WebKit built into Dreamweaver comes into play. So right now, Dreamweaver by default try to render node.tpl.php as a file. Doesn't work for Drupal, but what I'll do is I will change the new browser bar to point to my home page of my Drupal site. So are you going to do that for me? No server found? Okay, that's not cool. D6, D6, oh, sorry. Apologize everybody, D6 was not there. I don't know what's going on here. We have sites, Adobe, CS5, Dreamweaver, 6. Uh, you can check one thing real quick so we do this right. I'm going to check what folder I'm in. Uh, Drupal 6. Okay, so this is kind of me adding a site. Okay. Oh, great. Um, how do I click apply with a short window? Uh oh. Am I going to be in trouble? Uh, okay. Let's see if. Huh? Who got? Command control drag. Command control drag. No, it's it's the resolution that changed on me. The green dot. Hey, thanks so much. I forgot about that. All right. Okay. Sorry. So I'm gonna quickly reboot my map. Okay. It's going. It's going. It's going. Shoot. And uh, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit quick magic. Just needed to load. Need to load. Come on, come on, come on. Spin, spin, spin faster. I put more RAM into you. Come on. All right. And by the way, if you're developing, tap your machine out as much RAM. Well, I mean, if it does 64 gigs of RAM, then you're just crazy. But um, if, if your machine taps at like 4, 8 gigs, put it in. It's, it's, it's worth it. Okay, so uh, let me refresh now. And so look. Uh, my Drupal site, and it's plain vanilla, is actually rendering live in Dreamweaver. So what I would be doing now is I would actually be able to click live code, and it would actually update the code view to show what Drupal is rendering. And if I clicked an element, we see the code get highlighted live. Get this. jQuery is built into Drupal. Dreamweaver can pause live JavaScript in action. So if you're trying to style a hover on a drop-down menu and you're like trying to hover it over a bunch of times in your browser, forget that. Come on. No, you can actually, you know, click inside. In fact, here's a really cool thing. Um, I'm going to actually go down to my create a new account link. I'm going to actually hold control in Dreamweaver in the browser and I could say follow the link. So command click is actually... What I do, I hold command, I press click, I am now navigating. I can add nodes in Dreamweaver. I can change your theme settings in Dreamweaver. This is WebKit. This is Safari. So I'm good to go. Even better, though, is the inspect feature, which is like Firebug. So now, look, I'm, I'm highlighting items. What do you think happens when I click it? Highlights the code. Highlights the CSS on the right side panel. Tells you what it's got. Okay? Even better, you see this floating navigation indicator? I'll click that. I get all the styles and what file it came in. Everything. So now I can go see, hey, what's the clear block style defined in this certain CSS file? 
Okay, so I'm able to jump in around inspect. I do not even really use Firebug anymore unless I need to do something really, really deep that Dreamweaver doesn't do. But this is more than 80% of what Firebug has out of the gate. Um, a lot of advanced tools, I, don't, I can't go into too, too much of them, but basically this is what the new version of Dreamweaver CS5 uh, brings us. Now, uh, I just want to kind of do a very, very, very quick plug. This is Dreamweaver CS4. Not as exciting, I understand. In fact, here's a quick, you know, no TPL file. Uh, but what I want to show you guys is I have uh, been working very hard on a suite of tools for Dreamweaver. So uh, imagine you've actually got this, uh, you've got this no template file open. Hey, you going gonna to open for me? Okay, so I have a node blog template that I've opened, right? This is in my Dreamweaver site. This is in my theme folder. So Dreamweaver's, ha uh, Dreamweaver's got this file open. It's a standard uh, node.tpl file, just renamed as node-blog. But what I'm doing in Dreamweaver, and this is coming for CS5, is I've added special things for developers and even designers, theme designers. So you can go to this bindings panel that's been in Dreamweaver for six years, and I can actually say, hey, give me the binding PHP variables for no templates and I automatically list them and literally you can just drag and drag and drag so it just goes on and on and on and on in fact I even uh, try to get people started because I give uh, when you go file new I even have a whole set of uh, special templates in here do they actually list properly uh, well, it looks like I broke them. I guess not. But uh, basically, every every TPL file that comes with core, uh, I have a quick wizard option that will just boom, 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 give you the code for it, get you started, put it in your theme folder, save it in the theme folder, name it properly. Uh, new versions that I'm working on, if you have a node TPL file or a node hyphen TPL file, I'm actually making it so you don't have to choose the node template variables to show up listed. It would automatically know from the naming convention. So I'm doing a lot of these add-ons, but by default, Dreamweaver, like CS5, uh, it works really, really good. It's excellent for theme designers. Uh, for developers, it has PHP and JavaScript and CSS support. It's really, really good.